You know, it's, it's fascinating to, to listen to this, um, particularly Dr. Tressman when he talks about fidelity and supervision and psychotherapy and medically assisted treatment. All of that comes back in the real world to one issue, and that is resources. That is resources. And I cannot tell you the number of times I've sat on the bench, and I know Chris Clemens and Judge Dillon and, and have sat on the bench and thought, how are we going to pay for this? Where are the resources in our, our community? Um, I want to introduce Jennifer Williams. Jennifer Williams is going to talk about some dollars and cents in, in, involved in, in uh, this issue. Jennifer Williams has been a probation officer for 20 years, first with the state and for the last 18 years with uh, the United States District Court. She is the first uh, female chief U.S. probation officer in the history of the Western District of Virginia. I work with Jennifer daily. She supervises all of our um, uh, state, uh, all of our seven uh, divisional offices in the Western District. Uh, she is a, a real uh, pleasure to work with, and I know you will uh, learn from her with regard to some of the costs associated with um, these outcomes. Jennifer. Everybody hear me now? Okay, all right. So, uh, as you know, persons ordered by the court to a term of supervision are monitored by a probation officer. So let's start with an overview of federal and state probation in Virginia. Uh, here I have two maps. The top map shows the federal judicial districts in Virginia. It is split into two districts. We have the western part, which is what we are a part of, and then there's the eastern half. Uh, the bottom map is a map of the state offices, uh, the state probation offices, and they have three regions. They're known as regions. They have the, the western region, um, which covers this area down here, the central region in through here, and then the eastern over here. Uh, the, the top table over there, I've listed the number of probation offices uh, in Virginia. The, the total number of federal probation offices is 12. The total number of state, including satellite offices, is 54. And the federal offices supervise 3,400 people, while the state supervises 66,765 people. Now that number does seem to be large, but when you put it in perspective, there are 8.5 million people living in Virginia, so that kind of puts it in perspective for you. The bottom table uh, narrows it down to just our region. So in Virginia Western, there, as Judge Urbanski said, we have seven uh, divisional offices. The state has 21. Uh, we have 33 federal probation officers. The state has 264, and, and those are the numbers of people that we supervise. What that narrows down to is approximately, uh, for every officer in the federal system, there are about 32 people on supervision. And for the state, for every officer, there are about 67 people, super not, persons on supervision. That's the average. Okay. I'd like to share with you data that is provided by the administrative office in Washington, D.C., and the Virginia Department of Corrections regarding costs associated with incarceration and supervision. This table shows per capita averages for the federal system as a whole and specifically for Virginia. It is important to note that the data in this table divides costs incurred by the U.S. Marshal Service, the Bureau of Prisons, and the Administrative Office for Housing, Monitoring, Treating, and Supervising. Likewise, the state figures also include services, treatment, community residential treatment and diversion and detention center treatment expenses. I think Judge Urbanski had already mentioned earlier that the, oops, excuse me, that the cost uh, to incarcerate folks is around $36,000, and it's not too far off in the state, $31,000. Um, what you might find interesting, or what I found most interesting, was this cost compared to this cost. 
And uh, one of the things that I think drives that is that those numbers are, are based on national costs, so costs across the country, not just in Virginia. Um, the U.S. Marshals and the Probation Office also have to use airplanes to transport people or to go see people or to conduct their business, so that may be also a factor. And the fact that the, the ratio, um, the number of people on supervision and the number of officers may also impact that number. Uh, many of you who uh, practice in federal court will see these numbers in the pre-sentence reports that you receive, so they should look familiar. I hope that you have, that this does look some, somewhat familiar to you. Okay, let's focus on the cost incurred on post-conviction supervision. Based on the circumstances of a case, the court may order specific conditions of release and the most common conditions that have a financial component or drug testing substance abuse treatment, location monitoring, and mental health treatment. So who pays for this and what considerations are taken into account? If the court does not order the, the defendant to pay for the cost of these services, then the probation office pays with funds that are collected from the taxpayer. Of all these conditions, I would like to focus on the substance abuse treatment services conditions. And this is an overview of substance abuse treatment services provided by the Bureau of Prisons and the Virginia Department of Corrections. Uh, so as you can see, there's, there's several uh, options available for people uh, that go into federal custody and several options, uh, the people, uh, treatment services that can be provided in the Department of Corrections. Substance abuse treatment while in supervision. The tools used by probation officers to determine if an individual should be referred for substance abuse treatment include pre-sentence post-conviction reports, risk assessments, any conversation that you have with the defendant or offender, the, the um, family, social networks, and random drug testing. The process for the referrals includes determining whether the individual is willing to participate, determine whether the individual has insurance, funds to pay for treatment, or is eligible for Medicaid. Uh, Medicaid uh, is a big deal that the rules for that, whether people qualify for that, change significantly this year. So we're finding more and more people that are eligible for that, which is important. We then make a referral for an assessment with a contract provider, review the assessment and authorize services if, if appropriate, and then we follow up with a provider to monitor compliance. All right, what are some of the financial and other considerations that we, we take into account? Probation office contracts uh, with various treatment agencies, and we will pay for the services uh, if an individual is unable to pay. The funding available for treatment services is limited. Uh, both state and federal agencies reserve, receive a certain sum of money, so it is not unlimited. That's important to note. Uh, we have to look at whether the individual if the individual or for a court-sponsored drug treat, is the individual eligible for a court-sponsored drug treatment program? Judge Urbanski talked about several that, that we offer, and I know that the state has several as well, and Barker will talk about later. It is important to note in federal cases that the statute requires the court to revoke the term of supervised release and requires the defendant to serve a term of imprisonment if the defendant is part of drug testing, tests positive for illegal controlled substances, or refuses to comply with drug testing more than three times over the course of one year. Also, in federal cases, the court cannot fashion the length of a custodial sentence for the purpose of allowing a person to complete substance abuse treatment while in custody.
Unfortunately, I'm not able to provide specific or actual costs for treatment as internal procurement business information is confidential. However, I've created an example of uh, to, to show you what the costs are associated with different types of treatment and how they escalate depending on what the services are. Uh, so often outpatient group counseling consists of 12 weeks of counseling, uh, can cost up to $1,600 and, and so forth and so on with inpatient treatment being the most expensive uh, costing thousands of dollars. All right, now I told you it was going to be brief and that, that is my presentation. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. We have uh, time for a couple questions for Ms. Williams. Yes, Bob, you uh, stand up. I don't know if we can get your mic. Just in terms of the Medicaid expansion, what opportunities does this provide to the drug court and for probation for people to be on Medicaid and Medicaid then pays for their therapy? That's, that's, that's what we are seeing. Uh, Medicaid, if they are eligible for Medicaid, uh, they are able to access that type of service because Medicaid pays for it. And I don't know if they have any limits. <laughs> I don't know that Medicaid sets any limits. Jennifer, historically, we have not, um, as, as part of supervision, had medical <coughs> assisted treatment. That has not been part of the thing that we have, that we, we have paid for. Um, it might be interesting for the group to know, it might be interesting for the group to know, um, uh, at my direction, I asked you to look into that to see whether or not we could do that in this area to make MAT a part of the, uh, the service we provide. Have we had any luck? A little bit, Judge. We're making progress. Uh, we, we sent out some solic uh, we solicited for that type of service and received a minimal response. Uh, but we're also working with the administrative office to improve the solicitation process, to improve the wording and the contracts. Um, but we're making progress. Okay. Thank you very much. We now have time for a brief break. I, I'm told about five minutes. Is that right? Okay. Um, and, and there will be uh, refreshments outside, and we're also going to be setting up the panel and getting the panel discussion uh, set up immediately when you come back, so don't take very long. Panel members, please come up to the front.